previously on the Skip and Josh Sports Show. Twitter is a platform for a phone, mm-hmm. which is weird to say, oh, we're going to broadcast the game on your phone. You know, like, does, do you really want to watch on a six inch screen? I personally do not. No, I personally do not either. It, it, it goes against everything that, like, the marketing and advertising is telling us. Oh, come and buy Best Buy. Buy a 55-inch TV. Buy a 60-inch TV. Buy an 80-inch TV. Buy a 100-inch TV. Right? Oh, no. Watch the football game on your 6-inch phone. You're listening to the Skip and Josh Sports Show. Skip. How's it going? Great. You? Good. Really good. So we had some uh, listener email this week. I know. It was amazing. It was... From uh, from Sam in Montreal. Yeah. It was very long. It was a long email, actually. <laughs> it was elaborate. And he was commenting on your What Bugs Me of Tiger Woods. He didn't like it at all. Well, no. Actually, this uh, particular listener uh, doesn't like Tiger Woods either. But but the thing is, what he was saying, what, what, the, uh, what the listener was saying was that the reason he's such a big deal and everyone makes a big fuss about him is because in the last decade or two, it's because of Tiger Woods that, that golf is so popular. Because before Tiger Woods existed, golf wasn't as popular. And even though he's now basically out of the sport, I mean, who knows if he's going to come back and be a good golfer again. It's, again, because of him that these other golfers, like Dustin Johnson and Jordan Spieth and Rory McIlroy, that these guys are now popular. So the fact that he's making a comeback attempt, if you will, is a big deal. I, I don't I don't care for him, and I don't want to see him play, and I hope he does poorly, but that is why uh, all the media makes such a big deal about it. That's was, that was what the, uh, the listener was saying. He made a very good point, and I've been thinking about it all week since I read the email, <laughs> to believe it or not. He I made believe- he made a good point. I mean, obviously, Tiger's what grew the sport. I mean, they have ratings to prove it. You know, every when Tiger was playing on the, on the Sunday and was in contention, ratings were through the roof. When he wasn't, the golf was just back to normal. And there, there's no doubt about his contribution to the sport and everything. I mean, the guy was a great champion. He was the most dominant player probably will ever see. But I mean, what what bugs me is the way everybody follows him around like a little puppy tiger woods tiger woods tiger woods oh my god tiger woods is playing it's like it makes me nuts and i get it you know if you know the greatest player if you know when mike if michael jordan would say he's gonna come and make a comeback obviously everybody would be following him you know and if if this guy was saying another dominant player in another sport is saying i'm gonna make a comeback you know the media would follow him but the thing is is what bugs me about the coverage of him is it's not that they're following him about you know the, about his comeback it's that he sucks like he's not good <laughs> you know he hasn't been good he hasn't won tournaments he keeps trying to come back he keeps trying to come back and he can't do it so it's one thing to say you're they're gonna call you know f- covering his his return and keeping track of what he's doing and everything but but when you hear people talk about it on TV and on you know like they, they they talk as if he's going to be in contention. There's always this talk about like, oh, Tiger, what, what's Tiger going to do? What's Tiger? We know what Tiger's going to do. He's going to shoot four over and he's not going to make the cut. And that's what he's going to do. <laughs> you know, it's been the same story for five years. So that ends the Tiger Woods story. Yeah, I, I'll just finish with this. He's on the wrong side of 40, obviously, and he's had a bunch of injuries. He can't, and... he can't stay healthy. That's, that's a, I mean... That's the biggest part of his problem is he literally can't stay healthy. Like, you heard the quote that he said, like, when he was talking about coming back. He d- Look, he did a tournament this past weekend, and he shot really well, right? So that gives a lot of people hope. And he said, oh, yeah, I am getting my walking legs back, meaning, like, he can't walk the course. He can't although, walk. Although he did finish walking uh, all four days this weekend, this past weekend. So for people who are, you know, Tiger Woods supporters, that was an encouraging sign. Well, yeah, that he could walk the course. What about shooting the ball, you know, hitting the golf ball, you know? Forget about walking. I think Anybody I don't I don't walk. I don't have his scores in front of me, but I think he did well all except for day 4 of the tournament. I think he did relatively well. He now did. there were only 18 golfers in this tournament. It wasn't a regular tournament. No, but I mean, it doesn't um, matter where he places vis-a-vis the other golfers. It's like did he shoot, right. you know, and he shot he shot a good score, right? Which is fine. Good for him. But I mean, 
oh, God, enough of it already. You know, like I just, you know, I just, I just wish he would go away. He should just retire and go away, and let's talk about other. Let's talk about the golfers who are. I mean, look, I don't even. It's funny that we're getting so riled up about this. I don't, don't like, golf. like golf. You don't like golf. I don't play golf. <laughs> you don't play golf. I don't watch it. You don't watch it. We don't care. But it makes me nuts that he's all over the TV. <laughs> Speaking of golf, last thing. Speaking of golf, more you, golf. No, no, no. You you must remember, I don't know if this was 20 years ago, that you and I went to take golf lessons. Oh, my God. And then the place where we purchased the lessons shut down before we were able to take our last two lessons, I think. It was crazy. And we never got reimbursed for those last two lessons. Ne- not, never mind reimbursed. We, we got it as a gift from a group of friends. They got us golf lessons, and we started doing them together. Yeah. <laughs> we go for one lesson. Then we try to schedule the next one. Places shut down. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good gift. I think I might have got you that gift. No, no. I think it was like... I think uh, I got it for myself and for you, I think, is what happened. Possibly. Possibly. I thought it was like book, but see, a bunch of friends, you know? Yeah, who knows? Yeah. The Skip and Josh Sports Show is back. So this is completely changing the subject. The listeners don't know, but when we talked about doing this show months ago and even years ago, we debated what the show was going to be about. Was it going to be all sports? Was it going to be just fantasy sports? Was it going to be just one particular sport? Like, I think we even talked about maybe just doing a baseball show. Sure, yeah. And the reason we decided against doing just a baseball show and doing all sports is because we wanted to have something to talk about 12 months a year. Right. Well, I have to say that on a day like this or even next week or next month when obviously there's no baseball games to talk about, when the football season's over and, 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 you know, March Madness hasn't started, we might, we might wake up one day and say, hey, what are we going to talk about in this week's episode? But luckily, baseball is the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> it's great. The winter meetings came at a perfect time. They certainly did because we could have done just a baseball show and had something to talk about every week. Well, I mean, there are people that do just baseball. I mean, like fantasy sport, fantasy focused baseball podcast, you know, they do an episode all the time, right? And all off season, all in the off season, there's people that talk about it. They make a living off of it. But I mean, there's been so many signings and trades this week. Some of them I can't understand at all. Oh, I don't understand any of them. This is what I wanted to talk about. Guys are getting way more money. I, I mean, this happens every year. Like Some one guys guy... are getting way more, but some guys are going to get way less. The Edwin Encarnacion, he, he, he's like, I don't know if he's going to get what he wanted. You know? I'm, I'm surprised he hasn't been signed yet, to be honest. You know, supposedly he turned down some offers, even from the Jays, and now he, he was thought, thought he was going to get a better offer, and I don't know if that better offer is going to come. It might not. And it's interesting. I heard, I think, yesterday that Jose Bautista is considering going back to the Jays. What that says to me is that he didn't get anything better. Yeah. yeah, No other teams have made him an offer, um, which makes sense because he didn't have a good season. We know it wasn't Baltimore. That's for sure. (laughs) That was hilarious. So this closer Melanson, who was on the Nationals last year, I mean, he's a good pitcher, but the Giants like paid him way too much money. And even even like, you know, middle relievers like Brett Cecil, who was on the Jays last year, who signed with the Cardinals. Brett Cecil didn't even have a good season this past season. And the Cardinals gave him a four year deal. I don't know how much it was worth. You know, I could do as good a job as Brett Cecil. Obviously, I'm exaggerating. But the thing with Cecil is he throws with his left arm and left handed pitchers are so hard to come by. They're, they, they, are, they are, but they're not. I mean, like, I would never give, like, the amount of money that, they, that the Yankees gave to Chapman and, like, what Melanson's making and, like, what they say that Kenley Jansen's going to get. I mean, like, just think about it. Kenley Jansen, right? This guy's going to be the highest paid reliever in baseball, right? Or more or less one of the highest. He's going to get more than, than um, who was Chapman? This, who, I don't know. He's going to get a fortune, right? He's going to get close. But... Who was this guy a few years ago? You know, the guy was, was a, a catcher, catcher, right? Like relievers, especially closers, like teams can can develop them. They 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 will appear. You will have guys on your team that can become closers. And I, I, I mean, yes, it's important to have a closer. Yes, it's important to have a great bullpen. We've seen the last five to ten years this shift to strong bullpens, deep bullpens, right? Teams have won with these great bullpens like the Royals, right? They throw one guy after another after another, you know? The Giants, you know, also tons of arms, right? And But I just can't see how, like, I mean, Chapman's great, but I just can't see how, I'm, how they can give him the money that they gave him. It's just kind of crazy. The other, the other thing I don't understand is 
the Nationals went and got Adam Eaton, and they gave up Lucas uh, Giolito. They were trying to get Chris Sale, and and the White Sox wanted uh, Trey Turner. And and luckily, the Nationals were smart and said, there's no chance we're trading Trey Turner. Um, So then they went and got Adam Eaton, and they still gave up Giolito. Now, who knows? Giolito's a prospect. Maybe he'll be great. Maybe he won't. But I don't know. But, that's not but Adam the, Eaton is nothing special. I know, that's but it's my not point. the point. The perceived value of Giolito is higher than Adam Eaton. Even if they say, you know what, Giolito, no, 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 we're not sold on him. No, 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 we're not sure. In the, within their organization, maybe there's doubts. Nobody else knows that. You know, this guy's the top prospect. you got to get yeah. something back. You don't just get, like, honestly, Adam Eaton, I mean, talk about average. You know, yeah. talk about an average I don't, player. I don't, have, I don't have his stats in front of he me. He hit 14 but, uh, home runs this year. He hit 14 home runs last year. What's like, so good about that? I know. He, I, I think they nothing... want him to be a leadoff hitter. They don't want him to be a power oh, wow. hitter. They think they have enough power. But um, anyway, listen. His numbers the last two seasons are virtually the same, Adam Eaton. Okay? <laughs> they're, they're, he's the same. It's like it's, he had 284 with 14 home runs. And 14 stolen bases. The year before, 287 with 14 home runs and 18 stolen bases. That's what he is. It's just he's an average player. You know, he's not he's not the kind of player you give your your top prospect in your organization for. Check out the Skip and Josh Sports Show on Twitter. You know that little app with the little blue Tweety Bird? Yeah, you can follow them there at Skip and Josh. We did get another um, listener mail this morning okay. from a listener in San Diego okay. who, who suggested that we mention that uh, the Chris Sale trade, um, they got this Cuban guy, Joan Moncada. Mm-hmm. That was the big prospect. He's like the fifth best prospect in all of baseball. And he actually played like a little bit this year for the Red Sox. Like, uh, you know, he got called up in September. But um, it's, he says he wanted to point out that it's interesting because the Yankees and the Red Sox were in some crazy bidding war to get this guy out of Cuba. Makes sense. So the Cuban government agreed that he could leave. So he got a huge contract. But who knows where the money actually goes, right? Like, I don't think it goes to right. him. So the Red Sox paid $31.5 million a signing bonus just to get this guy <laughs> into the minor leagues. And now they've traded him for Chris Sale. <laughs> And um, what my what uh, the listener was saying, what's amazing is the Red Sox outbid him, outbid the Yankees, and then they traded for Chris Sale, who is a complete Yankee killer. The Yankees cannot hit this guy, so he thinks it's like a crazy double whammy, you know that uh, that how like this guy just figures in this this one prospect just figures into this whole thing. So it's it was very interesting. interesting. You're you're absolutely right, or the listener is absolutely right. And I'm glad you brought up the Yankees because then I guess they figured, well, we better go out and do something. And they went and signed Araldus Chapman for five years or whatever it was. They have tons of money. I don't think they care, but it's still not the point. You know, like it's just a crazy amount of but, money. But I, here's what I don't get. I get that the Yankees and the Red Sox spend all kinds of money and they're always competing against each other and they feel like they have to contend every year. But the Yankees and the Red Sox are completely different this season. The Red Sox you know, made the playoffs and they're, you know, maybe one player away or two players away from winning the world series. Let's just say the Yankees, they were awful and they're not even close to contending. As far as I'm concerned, their pitching rotation is weak at best. Their batting lineup is weak at best. They're several players away from contending. If I were them, I wouldn't go and spend all this money on Araldis Chapman. They're not going to be competitive this year or even next year. You're absolutely right. They, I think the Yankees got excited because they had a really hot month of September and they kind of got a little bit close. They called up all those rookies, those prospects who, you know, had great finishes of the season. But, yeah, like you said, they're, they they had a fire sale the first time in in the last... 20 years or more that the Yankees basically sold off their players, you know, come trade deadline. That doesn't happen. You know, they're though the Yankees are buyers. They're not sellers. And this year they, they just sold everybody. And I mean, look, and and they should continue to sell everybody that they they should go with the same model that the Cubs used a few years ago. Yeah, they should. But I don't know. I guess uh, Chapman, who knows? So where do you think uh, Encarnacion is going to end up? Who knows? I thought he was going to go to Boston. They still haven't replaced Big Poppy's bat. Yeah, I know. I thought so also. 
they, they the Red Sox did sign somebody this week, Mitch Moreland. Oh, Mitch Moreland. Yeah, he's good. He, Mitch Moreland. I mean, I, let me let me look up his stats. He's a he was a decent player. He's on Texas. Okay, but he's not. No, Big he's Poppy. not. He's not. No, not even close. Mitch Moreland actually is an interesting player because he's a left-handed batter, and they really only used him against righties. They never really gave him a chance to hit, play full time. He was always a part-time player for Texas, and I always felt like this guy could break out, you know, if they would give him the chance. But they just they always held him back. And uh, but we'll see. Maybe maybe in Fenway he's gonna be you know made for that Fenway Park. You know, left-handed batters. We'll see. It's interesting that uh, David Ortiz posted something on Instagram after he heard about Chris Sale, you know, implying that he's considering coming back. You think so? I, I mean, listen, <laughs> Brett Favre came back twice, so who knows? Oh, yeah. I mean, that would be crazy. I mean, clearly Does he, have he to can give still... back all his gifts. I, he should. <laughs> <laughs> he, sh he should. I mean, clearly he can still hit. I mean, there's no... Uh... He had, he had an amazing year. Like, if you, there's no reason for him to retire other than that he just felt like retiring. He's like, thought that my time's up. But maybe if he wants to give another kick at the can, I think the Red Sox would definitely welcome him back. So anyway, we'll see what happens. But I don't know where, to answer your question, I don't know where Encarnacion's going to end up. Uh, the Jays went and signed um, Kendris Morales. He's good. Which he's supposed to replace either Encarnacion or Bautista. He can easily replace Bautista's numbers, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And he can come close to, to Encarnacion. Not exactly the same power, but he's still a good hitter, Kendrys Morales. But I'm wondering if now that uh, some signings have been made, that teams are running out of money. Obviously, that doesn't happen. But the 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 fines for exceeding the salary cap... Yeah got higher with yeah. the new collective bargaining agreement i guess teams like the red sox and the yankees and the dodgers and the angels just don't care about that they they've always not cared right i mean the, the yankees and red sox used to basically just flout that just basically like oh yeah we're just gonna piss spend and we don't care about the luxury tax but you know and if the fines are heavier maybe they're they're gonna come back i mean they're, they're, the reason why the fines are heavier is so that you know they made to make them care but i guess we'll see I mean, the Dodgers' payroll is just crazy, right? Especially if they re-sign Kenley Jansen. I mean, uh, it's going to be nuts. Hi there. Skip and Josh will be right back. To get in touch with them, you can send them an email to skipandjoshshow at gmail.com. You can follow them on Twitter at Skip and Josh, and you can visit their website at www.skipandjosh.com. And now, back to the show. I want to talk about uh, college basketball because I have some bad news. What? I think a, a week or two ago, I was on the TSN website going over their broadcast schedule for, for college basketball. Yeah, so far it's been great to me. We've had I a was lot of Duke. I was excited that there was a lot of Duke. But if you recall, and I wish I had taken a screenshot of the page, this Saturday, Duke is playing UNLV. Right. And that game was supposed to be on TSN. Don't tell me they replaced it with curling. TSN has changed their schedule. There is still a, a college basketball game on TSN this Saturday. However, it is now Arizona versus Missouri. It's oh, no God. longer the Duke game. Why do they do this to us? I don't know. So that is the bad news. The good news is they have now posted the broadcast schedule for January, and there is one Duke game uh, on January 4th, Duke versus Georgia Tech. So... You know, I guess they're only posting the schedule one month at a time, and, and Great. clearly Great. we've noticed that the schedule can change. So don't uh, don't book your plane ticket just yet. I did book my plane ticket. I'm going to be in New York January 4th, so I can't even watch it anyways. Although I'll be able to get oh, it no. on ESPN. Yeah, yeah, you'll watch it on ESPN. So even yeah. better for you. Yeah. Did you watch the game against Florida? I, I did watch the game. The same thing as what happened last week. I, I didn't find out the score. I watched it the next day. This time you remembered that you recorded it, though. This time I remembered, though, and I watched it the next day while I was preparing dinner and doing laundry. So I was only – it was on in the background. And yeah. I saw that uh, two of the freshmen played, and, and, and they played against Maine as well. So it looks like the team is getting healthier. It's it's interesting because, like, I was always wondering, like, where the bodies are going to fit in, how the rotation is going to be from – how it is now, how it was a few weeks ago to how it is now to how it's going to be come, you know, tournament time. And um, I'm not sure how all those guys are going to fit in. It's a lot of bodies, right? Uh, clearly, like, Bold, Marcus Bolden, 
I think he's more or less a backup. I don't see him as an impact player so far, unless you know they're they're babying him along with his injury. He seemed to be basically just the backup big man. The guy whose minutes will get affected is Chase Jeter. Like I think he's gonna suffer because of that. But but uh, Tatum looks like the real deal, right? I mean, this guy is probably the best player on the team. <laughs> it's unbelievable how good he is. Well, again, I can't comment because I didn't see much of the game. I was happy to see that uh, Kennard had a great game on when on Tuesday. Kennard is just unconscious in shooting. He the and guy actually, is an incredible shooter. I like this guy last year. He wasn't really a starter. No. For the first half of last year. Yeah. And then Coach K started to use him a little bit more in the second half of the season. Uh, but I always I, I really liked him. I thought he, he, he can a- make shots from everywhere. And you know what's interesting? Grayson Allen got elevated last year into, as the leading scorer. But he's the leading scorer because he takes a lot of shots, right? Mm-hmm. And I think as the season's going to go, Grayson Allen's role as a scorer, not as not as his role on the team, but his role as a scorer is going to get pushed aside because now they have other options, right? Emil Jefferson's getting 20 points almost every game. Right, and it's not just getting offensive rebounds and putbacks. The guy's got a like the guy's good around the basket. He has he he's he's really good down low, and Tatum is gonna score. He the guy can score from anywhere. Kennard literally can score from anywhere. Like that, there's no shot. Every any time he puts up a shot, I think it's going in. Doesn't matter what kind of shot it is. And, and Duke so finally I, has a bench. Yeah, so I think Allen's role is gonna be more of a almost point guard, you know, a distributor and defender compared to. You know what he did last year, and and the big guy that we'll see left is Harry Giles. We'll see if I don't know if he's gonna come back. Like I don't know what the timetable is. They're very secretive about Giles's you know comeback, but he's the guy who missed all of last season in high school, correct? He's had already. I don't know if he missed all of last season, but he's had already a several knee surgeries. So I mean, that guy might never play again. Yeah. Yeah. He's so, got all this potential. He's got all this talent, but he might never play again. Yeah. Or. I, but it's interesting because in years past, they would um, they would do like a medical red shirt on a player like this, which is like what they did with Jefferson last you know? year. So you know when a player gets injured, if he's really out the whole year, they can they can basically um, declare that he's injured, and then he can he won't lose a year of eligibility. And a lot of players are interested in that. But this guy, I think he just they're not going to do it because he. He's gonna he go into to go the, the draft, yeah. right? So he's basically although, yeah. Although, will any NBA team draft him if he doesn't play at all this year? I don't know. They did with Kyrie Irving, and what did he play? Seven well, games, eleven he, he, games. He played eleven games. This guy hasn't played a minute yet. Yeah, it's funny how it's funny how all the guys right that Duke had in the one and done era. There's been a few, right? Like in, in the last you know five to ten years, and the Kyrie Irving, he's so much about Duke. He loves representing duke right i don't know like my son follows all the the, the shoes the shoe culture and you know mm-hmm. Kyrie comes out with his Kyrie shoes that are called brotherhood they're like duke colors every year he has a brotherhood shoe so like he's so interested and he was there at the game cheering them on right at the game against florida he was there right courtside and and the guy only played 11 games for duke <laughs> so it's it's like i always find it so funny like the guy who played 11 games is the biggest cheerleader you know of all that of them is- that is interesting. I'm just reading something now on ESPN.com that uh, Irving spent some time in Durham this past off season, and so he knows all these young guys like yeah. Tatum and Giles. Yeah, he met them. I don't know how much time he spent with them. So you're right. It is interesting that he only played 11 games, and he still feels like he was there his whole life. Tatum's the re- the, the real deal. Dick Vitale was going crazy over this guy. Like it was. I mean, it was only one game. So let's see about another game. But he looks like the real deal. He's six foot eight. He's super athletic. He could hit all kinds of shots. Like he can handle the ball. I mean, like uh, it, he look, to me looks like the real deal. This guy, and like Dick Vitale was saying, when you have on the court Jefferson, Tatum, Allen, Kennard, you know, all these guys on the court, you can't guard them all, you know. So uh, they're gonna be Duke's gonna be really tough because you know there's been so many Duke teams over the years that all they do is chuck threes, right? How mm-hmm. many how many teams have we ha- have has Duke had where it's just guys that are shooting threes, guys that are shooting threes. All we do is shoot threes. There's no inside game. There's no big men, and we have good regular seasons because we hit a lot of threes. But then eventually you get into the tournament. You have one cold game and then you're out, right? Mm-hmm. But the team, the Duke teams that are good are teams that have a balance, and when we can go inside, outside, outside, inside, 
um, like this team looks like they can do, they're going to be really lethal. They're, they're, I mean, there's a reason why they were preseason number one. and They don't really have a, a tough game until January. The next time they play a ranked team is, is the middle of January, I think. Yeah, well, there's usually a little Christmas break that comes, right, and everything, so. Yeah, because the players have exams. Yeah, exams. <laughs> Are you holding up the quotations like I am? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. For those watching on News Channel 8. <laughs> I love it. You're listening to Skip and Josh Sports Show. The Canadians are in big trouble. They're they're in definitely in trouble. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. I, I mean, mean, in my opinion, Galchenyuk is the top forward on the team. Yes. And certainly one of the top three guys overall on the team. Yes. And the thing with the Canadians, every team has injuries. You know, um, Steven Stamkos got injured, and Johnny Goudreau got injured, and, and then a bunch of other guys who I'm forgetting right now. Yeah. But the Canadians have no depth. They don't have any secondary scoring. So yeah. this is going to be a huge blow to them. Yeah. You know, it's funny because everyone's saying, like, oh, they lost Deharnay and Galchenyuk. Deharnay, like, he, he's replaceable by anybody. Like, this guy is, uh, you know. Losing him might actually end it, up being it will a good improve. Thing. You know, I read a crazy stat on Twitter. I, and I almost couldn't believe it. I thought it was a joke, and I had to double-check it. You know how they record um, hits, right? It's a stat now, how many hits guys guys dish out. Yeah. Well, it took 25 games into the season, for which was that last game, um, for David DeHarnet to record his first hit. Really? Yes, and he got injured in that game. So... <laughs> Well, he shouldn't really be hitting anyone because the no, guy, would, I, the opponent, wouldn't feel anything. I know, but I mean, so what's the point? It just goes to show. I mean, the guy is playing shinny hockey out there. That's the whole problem. I respect David Dayarnay. I respect the guy. He worked very hard to get where he is. You know, he went through all the low levels of the minors. Every at every level, he was told he's too small. At every level, he was they were he's told he's not good enough. And at every level, he led his team in scoring in all the iterations of the minors, the East Coast Hockey League. Everywhere he went, finally he made it. And he had some good years, but like, he's he's just he's not an a um effective National Hockey League player. Well, he's, he's he has to play on on one of the first two lines if he's going to play at all because he's not a third and fourth line player, and, and he's not good enough for that. Exactly, he's not. And, and I a lot of it is the size. The... A lot of it is the size. But the guy has no shot. He has he has a shot of a pee wee hockey player. Like his the strength of his shot. He he doesn't he doesn't shoot the puck because he's it's so soft his shot. Anyways. But Galchenyuk is a huge loss, and I don't know. Look, they're saying now it's you know six to eight weeks, so he's it's going to be twenty to twenty five games that he's going to miss, which is you know a quarter of the year. So there's no one there's no one in the organization who can take his place. No. So I don't know if they're going to go and make a trade. I don't know who they have available to trade. I mean, if you're going to get someone good, you have to give up someone. I good. don't think they can make a trade. I mean, I th- if you if you actually you know um, everyone in Montreal is saying, oh, he's got to make a move. Bergevin has got to make a move. And my opinion is, no, he doesn't have to make a move. This is the wrong time to make a move. This is when you're making a move out of weakness. When other other general managers are going to try to fleece you. Try exactly. They're going to try to take advantage because they know you're in a bad situation. You right now, the Canadians really need to go look at it in like five game, five game spurts. Let's look at the next five games. Let's look at the next five games. Let's look at the next five games. And they need to basically try to tread water in the standings until Galchenyuk could get back. And because they have Carey Price, it's possible that they could tread water during all these games. You know, and and hopefully, hopefully by the time Galchenyuk comes back, they'll still be in a playoff spot. Yeah, I mean, clearly the the road trip was a disaster because they lost, I think, three out of four, if I'm not mistaken. And well, they, then of they, course... they they split they split the whole road trip. Well, no, because you're not thinking of the game against Detroit. So they 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 played 500 on the whole road trip. In oh, okay, I was I was thinking about the three games on the West Coast and the one game in St. Louis. Yeah, well, they got a point in St. Louis and they got they beat the Kings and you know so. But they also they also they lost uh, they lost, lost, lost Galchenyuk. Yeah, they lost Galchenyuk, which is huge. You know, so. so not a good road trip. No, definitely not. Well, not in terms of you know the outcome. I think um, they're gonna I think they're gonna call up McCarron. Um, but he's also wasn't injured. he a first round pick a couple of years ago? He was, yeah. But I mean, he's not gonna he's not gonna stable he's not gonna contribute on the offense. This guy, but he can play center, and you know they just right now they don't have anyone in the organization that's gonna come up and 
obviously replace Galchenyuk. That's not possible. So they just need to get some depth in their lineup in terms of whatever it is. So m the problem is McCarron was also injured. So apparently he's close to coming back. So I think you'll see him get called up, you know, within a week. I wonder sometimes about these first round draft choices that the Canadians make. It seems like they always pick like some big burly guy from the Western Hockey League. That's happened so many times. Who's yeah. great in the corners and ends up on the fourth line. Yeah, they've had well, I mean, look, it, that's it's a bit it, that's what you remember, but you know, they also drafted Galchenyuk too, right? So well, that was the only year that they had a high pick. Yeah, they had the third pick. But if you remember that draft, everyone was clamoring for them to draft uh, Grigorenko. I do remember that. And he was picked next by Buffalo, and you know how what, what's happened to him. So they did right. make a good. They did have a good. Actually, he's the best player in that draft because uh, Yakupov is garbage, right? And um, well, the guy who was drafted second was a defenseman, but um, you know, so he he's good. They they they've developed him. He's a good player. He's definitely an offense that like he's in the top was the eighth in the league in scoring at you know when he got injured or something so i mean the canadians have one scary line if you will i wouldn't even call it scary and when they play on the road and the opposing team can yeah. has it has a good has a good defensive line that can check them yeah they're gonna have to win games two to one yeah and they have the kind of team that can so i think that can do that so can you sustain that for 25 games? 25 2 to 1 games? No, but hopefully they can play 500 until uh, until they get healthy. The Skip and Josh Sports Show is back. So, uh, do you want to move to uh, fantasy football? Fantasy football, yeah. Sure. Fantasy football is insane. Well, it's, it's been the most weird season and and now all of a sudden our league's in the last week before the playoffs and it's like there's a thousand permutations of who could make it and who might not make it and everything. So, the fact that it, you're right, this is the last week, and only one team has been eliminated, and only one, we only know that um, that team Kleinman, yeah, has clinched first place because they haven't lost. Yeah, that's the only thing we know. Uh, second, third, and fourth Still are all grabs. to be determined. Second place has clinched. Team Schnurback has clinched the playoff spot, but where they're going to end up, who knows? So there's two playoff spots up for grabs. And there are five teams that can get those two playoff spots. Your team needs quite a bit of help. I'm no kidding. <laughs> I need so, like I need all kinds of miracles. So A, you have to win. That's yeah. first of all. I'm playing you. You, you also so that need, should be easy. You, <laughs> you're playing me. That should be easy. Actually, my team isn't looking good this week, so you might actually win. But you also need the Ryan Express and the Mars Bars both to lose. Yeah. And then you need the Hee Haws to win their game. But you need to score forty-five more points than the Heehaws score in order to break, in order to have the tiebreaker. So that seems kind of unlikely. It does seem kind of unlikely. I think I think the wins could all happen, but the forty-five points, there's no way. That is a highly unlikely. I want to tell you something about the standings. Tell me. So if you look at the standings, and you can sort by points for and points against, and points for is a good indicator of, you know, how good your team is, you know, right? Agreed, yes. So obviously, you know, Mark's in first place. He's got more than 100 points for than the next person, right? Right, yeah. And and so on and so on, you know. So, like, I'm in the middle of the pack, and our teams have scored almost the same amount of points, you know. Yeah. Th that's fine. If you sort by points against, mm -hmm. okay? I did this today, actually. Yeah. My team, okay, so the 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 first the team that's had the least amount of points scored against them is you, eleven hundred and sixty nine. It, it's so lucky. now all this is complete luck. It's not like you have defense, right? No, it's total luck. Yeah. So you have. In other words, I should have lost more games than I did. You you you've had eleven hundred and sixty nine points scored against you, meaning like you've had the best luck in terms of your opponent. I get good run support. Yeah. Well, the opposite. You get good. yeah yeah. Now, I've had 1,351 points scored against me, by far, by far the most in the league, which means I've been by far the most unlucky team. That's true. Yeah. That's 100% true. So when I saw why, that, I was like, that's why my team sucks. Yeah, and it's, it is all luck. And it's that's why luck. you were saying that uh, there are some leagues that play two games a week. Yeah, it would help. And that might have evened itself out had we done that. So maybe we'll do that next year. Yeah, I think so. So, I mean... Uh, look, Mark's running away with the league. It's crazy. I thought he was going to lose last week. I don't understand. He was losing by a lot of points going into going into that last game, right? Yeah, he was. Uh, he was. I think he was down. 
um, he was playing against the Ryan Express. Ryan Express had 121, and I think Kleinman had less than 100. Yeah. And then right, Thomas nine, Rawls happened. Right. Thomas Rawls and Doug Baldwin in the Sunday night game uh, accounted for a total of 29 points. Yeah, that's crazy. And also, also Kleinman didn't have their their starting QB because he was on a bye. He uses different guys every week. Do you understand that? Um, Which, by the way, I couldn't believe that teams that Thomas Rawls still like doesn't play for him. He didn't play for it. Like he uses different guys every week, and no matter who he uses, they get like twenty points. This was Thomas Rawls got twenty three points on Sunday. Yeah. If you total up Thomas Rawls' total points the entire rest of the season, yeah, it doesn't equal twenty three. Oh I know God. because I had Thomas Rawls. Oh, another guy that you dropped. <laughs> exactly. So so he he got 23 on Sunday which brings his total for the season I think to 30 or something. Oh my god. 33. So yes, so Mark does have uh, uh Mark a lot is of definitely luck. the odds on favorite, so For sure, for yeah. sure. I was surprised that uh there were, there were teams that had a bye week last week because I thought this late in the season everyone's playing but I guess not. Yeah. So again about again just getting away from fantasy into into reality football. Mhm. Mm um big thursday night game yes it's going on right now the raiders and the chiefs like wow we've been we've been really bashing the thursday night matchups and then all of a sudden this oakland kansas city game comes along who do you think i was i was thinking about this today who do you think is like the favorites to win the super bowl oakland's certainly up there although yeah. their defense is weak like if you if you if i had asked you that question at week six or week week six, I would have said I would have said the Patriots. Exactly, everybody me. said the Patriots, right? And and in the NFC, people were like, "Oh, the Green Bay was still in the conversation, or you know, Seattle or whoever." But I don't think anybody Although takes the Cowboys. The, yeah. the Cowboys were five and one after week six. Their record it means you should be taken serious. They should be taken seriously, but I don't know. I think people just don't believe in them. I I think you're eleven and one. I mean, you if 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 you had to put money on it, you, you'd have to pick the Cowboys. They only have one loss. No one else has one loss. Yeah, yeah, I guess. And they and they probably have the MVP of the league on their team. And I'm not sure if it's their quarterback or their running back. Yeah, I guess. But it's so funny, right? Because like I look at the teams and I'm like, who's the Super Bowl winning team? Like Dallas. Like I find it hard to believe in Dallas. The Giants, they are like so underwhelming, right? I, I find it hard to believe in Seattle because didn't they lose Seattle to Tampa also. Bay two like, weeks ago or something? Yeah, Seattle's offensive line is not good. Their defense is great still, but it's not the same. You Can't know, like trust anybody Atlanta, in Tampa, South. Detroit, like these teams are not good. Green Bay is even in the playoff picture. I I don't have faith in them. Like and then in the AFC, yeah, New England, but like without Gronk, like how good are they really? Miami, I can't take them seriously. Baltimore, you know, definitely no one in the Houston, in the AFC South with Houston, Indy, Tennessee. Like those teams are all six and six. Everyone's like, oh, Tennessee's doing great. They're six and six. This you know? this uh, the game tonight, Oakland and Kansas. Oakland, Kansas City. City. Yeah, that's why that's why I brought it up because they seem like two of the strongest teams. Yeah, Although the Kansas team... City's defense is much better, obviously, but Oakland's offense is much better, and and. Kansas City already beat Oakland once this year. Yeah, but you know the team that's interesting to me that I don't think we should forget about is Pittsburgh, because their defense is awful. I know, but their offense is really scary. I don't know if they could somehow just put it together and like to me they're like the kind of team that you have to be careful of, in that if they get hot for three four games, you know, at the playoffs, right? Uh, they it's 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 going to be a weird playoffs because there's no dominant team, you know, so. I don't see any of these teams as like great champions. The thing is, New England's going to have home field. Not necessarily. For, they have two well, losses. They have the same record as Oakland. Right. So I, I don't know if if they end up playing Oakland. I don't know who's going to get home field in that game. I don't no, know how they decide no, that. It's like conference record or divisional record. Or... But if they play anyone else, they're going to play at home. And New England's very tough at home. But you're right. Without Gronk, it's a it's a completely different team. And I told you not to trust Marcellus Bennett. Told yeah, you. well, I I caught him. <laughs> I know, but I told you last week. You were like, "Oh, he's 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 on the Patriots, and they don't have Gronk." I'm like, yeah, "But he hasn't done anything except for one week." <laughs> my tight end spot, my tight end spot last week had zero. The hole. week before, different player had zero. So who are you using against me? I'm using what's his name on uh, Rudolph on Minnesota. You know what? He's your best guy that you can get because he's not great, but at least he's gonna get something. 
But Minnesota's offense is awful. I know, but he'll get five instead of all the zeros that you got. Well, five would be a, a huge, huge for me for my tight five, end spot. Five would be like, you know. I'd love if he got five. Well, I mean, he's they're going to throw to him, you know. Their offense is bad, but, I mean, he's he's going to get some production. It's just he's not going to be – and if you get lucky – He'll, he'll get a touchdown, and that'll make the difference, right? The only saving grace is that Minnesota's playing Jacksonville. Yeah, they're garbage. So, who knows? But, uh, yeah, ever since Gronk was injured, I've had a revolving door at tight end. Right. Can we talk about picks can pick them? Last week was very bad for me. Yeah? I only had five games right. I think I got six. You got six. Yeah. So, uh, it's time to lick my wounds and uh, try to get back on the winning track. I think that uh, I took Oakland over Kansas City tonight because Kansas City was uh, minus three and a half. I think that's a good bet. Let me see who I picked. Three and a half points in a game like that. I know Kansas City's at home, but I, I also just, took Oakland. I just can't see Oakland. I just can't see Kansas City covering there. It's, it's, although you know, it's such a crapshoot. This whole thing. It is a crapshoot. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Let's tell tell the listeners some of our picks. I, I'm looking at mine right now. I can't see yours. Sure. So I did. I did pick Oakland. They're they're um, they're actually getting three and a half points. Yeah. That's so I huge. Oak- it is huge. Um, what Pittsburgh- about the worst game of the season? Oh, let me go down to that. I know San which Francisco one you're Jets. <laughs> Hold on a second. So, so the Jets are getting two and a half. Yeah. That's only I guess because it's in San Francisco. Yeah. I'm taking the Jets. I took the Niners. Because I feel that, not because I'm a Niners fan, obviously, like, that's out the window with how the bad they are. Mm-hmm. But I feel that, like, the Niners could put up some points. You know what I mean? Like, their offense But is... why do you feel that? They Did you see what they did last week I against know, the Lousy Bears team? I know, but I feel like every Kaepernick, he's still, like, he's still dangerous. And the Jets are just a hot mess. God. It's so crazy. The Jets... They were good last year. You know, what the hell happened to them? I don't know. I really don't know. They all, they almost made the playoffs, and now they're they're toast. Yeah, it's crazy. The The Monday night game is interesting. So it's uh, Baltimore at New England, and New England's favored by eight and a half. I'll tell you who I took. Okay. Who did you take? I'm taking Baltimore. Me too. Eight and, ha- eight and a half's a lot. Too much. Too much. Especially the Patriots are not this high flying offense anymore. No, and uh, Baltimore's they're a bit underrated. You know, they're seven and five. Like my son says, Joe Flacco is the most underappreciated quarterback. He went to be he was considered like the most overrated quarterback. Remember when he got the huge contract? Everyone's like, mm-hmm. Oh, Joe Flacco, why they give him so much money just because they won the Super Bowl and everything. Mm-hmm. But like he's kind of underappreciated. I, I feel like if I feel like if he had a better weapons around him all these years, he would have really good numbers. There's another game with a big spread I want to ask you about. The Bears are playing in Detroit. The the hardest team to Oh, the Bears. God. <laughs> The Bears are playing in Detroit, and the Lions are favored by eight and a half. I had a lot of trouble picking this game. So did I, but I I'm taking the Bears because me eight and too. A half is a lot. I took the Bears just because the eight and a half is a lot, and I as good as Detroit's been playing, they've been very lucky, and all their games are close. The, all their games are close. I don't know. Eight and a half's a lot. Eight and eight and a half's a lot to ask. The Bears are so bad though. It's pathetic. It's God. It's really bad. The games are bad this week. I mean, we have a great game tonight, but I mean, the rest, I'm not so sure. Well, Pittsburgh-Buffalo might be a good game. Buffalo's interesting, but they always... uh, Yeah, you're right. I'm giving them too much credit. Yeah, I know. Denver-Tennessee could be a good game. The Cowboys-Giants is a good game on Sunday. That's true. Yeah. I mean, I hate both those teams, and I don't really care. I probably won't watch, but it should be a good game. And and in your household, the Redskins-Eagles game is going to be very yeah, popular. That's, that's going to be popular, although I think Matthew has kind of given up on the Eagles. Like I told him, it was supposed to have been a be rebuilding year. I, he, everyone got their hopes up because they started off 3-0. and And it was, should have never – it should have always been a 6-10, and 5-11. and 11. That's what the season should have been. You know, They were never going to be a good team this year. It's like let's see what happens next year. Let's see what let's see if Wentz gets better. Let's see if they get some skill position players, you know, and and we'll go from there. The Skip and Josh Sports Show is on now. You want to do what's bugging me? I am dying to hear about what's bugging me. I'm like, you told so me you had a huge one. I asked you if you had a what's bugging me. You're like, oh boy, do I ever? I'm like, yeah, I don't know if it's gonna live up to the hype. It might not live up to the hype. You're kidding me. 
Boy, are you bugging me, man. I'm gonna, when I get, I'm gonna nail, ooh, ooh, God. I'm, I'm getting bugged now, whoa, man. So if you look at the four uh, major team sports in North America, hockey, baseball, basketball, and football, mm-hmm. in hockey, the home team, other than the fact that you're playing in front of your home fans, in hockey, the advantage you have is you get the last change. Mm-hmm. And also, if it goes to a shootout, you get to pick if you want to shoot first or second. Yep. And in baseball, certainly the home team has the advantage of getting to bat last. Well, that's a perceived advantage, don't you think? I think, it, I think it's an advantage. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what the home team gets in basketball. Do, do they get anything? No. Other than, other than playing in front of their home crowd? Yeah. I don't know if they get anything. No, they don't. Okay. But here's what bugs me. I haven't gotten to it yet. In football, NFL, CFL, college, high school, you name it. What bugs me is the coin toss. It is the most (laughs) annoying thing. Why do they even have a coin toss? What should they have? They shouldn't have anything. If you're the home team team and every team has the same amount of home games, if you're the home team, you should get to decide. Do I want to kick or do I want to receive? Yes. It's simple as that. I agree. If, if it's if it's a neutral site game like the Super Bowl, okay, fine. Do your little coin toss. But the coin toss is such a – you could have potentially a team that loses every coin toss the whole season and never gets to pick if they want to kick or receive. But what should they do in overtime? Overtime's different. Fine. You do the coin toss. But I'm saying at the beginning of the okay, game – Okay, you're talking about just like to decide the kickoff. Yeah. I never, I've never understood why they even do a coin toss. <laughs> And you, then, have you ever some, seen those coin tosses where the ref screws it up? You ever see that times, one? A hundred times, yes. Mm-hmm. But anyway, it just bugs me that there is the coin toss because the home team should have the advantage. You're home, you should decide. Oh, do I want to kick or do I want to receive? This is a really interesting. What bugs me? I don't really have much more to say about no, it. No, because the thing is, it, it's a completely valid point, and a hundred percent, you're a hundred percent right. But like. I don't think it probably doesn't bug anybody else. It might not. There's a lot of things that bug me that don't bug other people. It's amazing that like, this is what you think about it. I'm kind of fascinated by it. But you know, going back to what you said about the four major sports, I guarantee you, and we'll try to get the numbers. I don't know how, but I will try to find them. You said the NBA, um, like you said, the NBA doesn't have any um, actual advantage for Maybe the Maybe they the do. Team. I don't know if they do. I don't think they do, but I'm sure that the highest percentage of of home wins is in and the nba you're 100 percent right nba the home team is like always wins it's a lock it's almost a lock. it's not a lock but i mean it's it's such a huge advantage and i just i guess maybe it's the net the courts like i don't know it's it's, it's kind of bizarre right i don't i don't know what the reason is but you're so right. so let me ask you something so nba they start the game right mm-hmm. shouldn't the home team just take the ball out of bounds to start the game well, no, there's a face-off in hockey, so you do a tip-off in basketball. I'm fine with that. Oh, okay, but like the coin toss, that's not the same. Well, the coin toss is different because it's there's so much thing. riding on the coin toss. Like the, the coach or the team has to decide, do we want to kick or receive? And then if what you end? defer, yeah. you have to what end you want to defend. And, for example, uh, the Redskins won the coin toss against the Eagles, I think. No, who are they playing this past week? The Cardinals. Yeah. They, the Redskins won the coin toss. And um, they decided that they were going to kick to the Cardinals. Right. And what happened? The Cardinals got the ball, the first possession of the game. They drove down the field, and they were up 7 nothing before the Redskins offense could even come on the field. Yeah. Well, but what, what does it matter? That's well, what it is. But a team like the Redskins, who has a good offense, who doesn't have a good defense— you would want to start your, your game with your ah, offense it's on all the field. random. Bill Belichick defers almost every single time. Yes, but Bill Belichick wins. <laughs> that trumps everything, I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I guess so. All right. Good show. That's all I got. That's, so that's check lot. out our website. Yeah, check out our website, skipandjosh.com. Follow us on Twitter, at Skip and Josh. We have a Facebook page. Just search for Skip and Josh Sports Show on Facebook. And um, definitely go on iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you get podcasts. You can find us. Give us a like. Give us a review. And keep those. You know, you can message us. We we, we love reading and talking about the fan, you know, interaction on on the episodes. 
yes, it's great. Keep the emails coming. Keep the comments coming. Yeah, and I do have a poll on our website for the Hall of Fame ballot. I voted. Yeah, I'll leave. I'll leave it up um, for another week, so we'll get some more votes, and um, maybe next episode we'll we'll talk about it. Great. All right, I'll talk to you next week. Okay. Bye. Bye. The Skip and Josh Sports Show is over now. Don't worry, there'll be another episode soon. <laughs>